Welcome back to this class on textile finishing. Just to recall, till the last time, what did we learn? We understood the importance of soil release vis-a-vis -vis soil repellency. We also understood and discussed why the common fluorochemical compounds are very good soil repellent, but it is difficult to release soil from these finished garments. And therefore, one had to synthesize a new type of smart compounds called the dual action fluorochemicals which would not only repel the soil but also help in the release of the soil. We also learned about some other compounds as soil releasing agents or finishes other than the fluoro compounds. So it is clear that for soil release, hydrophilicity of the surface is also very important. We also must remember that soil repellent and soil release finishes basically rely on surface modification and not bulk modification, right? So let's move on and uh, look at another interesting finishing treatment that is fire retardant finishing. This is one of the very important textile finishing treatments. Today in this interaction that we are having, we shall be defining what do we understand by this flame retardancy, approximately what is the burning process, the, what does it involve and just some fundamental approaches for rendering a textile fire or flame retardant, okay. That is what we intend to do in this lecture. Damages. You may be hearing a lot of news once in a while that the building is caught up in fire, that a tent arranged for a certain function caught fire, a fire in a cinema hall. All these things are very uh, difficult news to digest. So there are damages which happens due to fire, tragedies happen and that actually becomes an important safety consideration for any, let us say a legislative body. When a fire occurs in any environment, so there is definitely damage to life which we are quite bothered. There is definitely damage to property, valuable property and so that is permanent. These days we hear lot of natural calamities like forest fire. Recently, you have heard fires in Amazon forest, before that many other such forest areas, particularly in dry season, get fire and there is a lot of damage. And vis-a-vis -vis that we have city fires where the buildings, the temporary structures, 
they catch fire and these are generally we will consider as a man-made disasters. Then industrial fires which happen in various industries due to uh, flash fires, flammable compounds and in some sense the fire department is always kept on their toes because you get keep getting calls at odd hours that something wrong has happened somewhere and it has caught fire. So fire and damage to the fire is a common place and one would obviously like to avoid it. So where do the textiles come into this picture? Textiles are everywhere. Starting from the apparel that we wear, the household textiles which may be curtains, carpet, rugs, wall hangings, upholstery, then the structural tents these days, lot of temporary structures are created for uh, generally for some function, but these structures can actually be quite permanent also. And then protective textiles where someone is actually working in industry where fire hazards are more common. So textiles are everywhere and what is the problem? The problem is textiles may also burn, you may have seen them. Can we solve all these problems starting from the natural disaster to the industrial fires and everything else? As a textile person, well, we may not be able to handle other things, but we can render the textiles more safe from the fire hazards and prevent some of these losses. Textile mills themselves can sometimes get fires lot of news keeps coming that the whole store in a spinning mill containing bales of cotton got destroyed. Otherwise in finishing departments and various other things you may have let us say pigment printing and you are doing uh, using a water oil a mixture as a thickening agent, there are chances that there are flash fires. So the fires can happen in daily life, in the house, outside the house and in the mills, any kind of environment can actually get fires and so one must be concerned about them. In fact, a lot of legislation has come up. In different countries, for example, baby wear, people would want it to be definitely flame retardant. Similarly, night wears, where persons are sleeping, they must be fly retardant, flame retardant. And of course, tents, tarpaulins, industrial safety garments. For example, a fireman's clothing, automotive textiles, including those which are used in upholstery in aeroplanes, rails, cranes, etc. So, there will be legislation which will help the user to become little more safer if some treatments have been given. So therefore, what we are discussing today becomes an important uh, finishing treatment which is flame or fire retardants. The cause generally would be a carelessness, a cigarette or something thrown at in, in, in a forest for example or where the flammables are stored could become 
one of the cause. Another cause which normally people find is some electric short circuiting. And so that also starts the fire and once the fire starts, it continues and damages a lot of property and sometimes lives also. So what is the primary goal of a fire retardant finishing treatment? Is it to save textiles? Obviously no. Our aim would be save lives, save property. In your opinion, which of the following in your opinion, burns more rapidly or is more dangerous with respect to burning, cotton, wool, polyester, polyethylene. Have you faced any time, let us say in your earlier classes, you may have done a flame test for identification of fibers. Do you remember the flame test for cotton? When you take it near the flame, what happens? Does it burn or not? It burns. What kind of smell does it give? Yeah, paper burning smell. Wool, does it burn? When you take it near the flame, it does burn, but differently. What smell? Something like burning hair, it is a protein fiber. Polyester, a common fabric. What happens here? Well, it shrinks. That is one thing which we normally notice that a synthetic fiber shrinks, which is thermoplastic. So, polyester also is thermoplastic and it shrinks and it melts and then it burns. So, shrinking, melting, burning could be reasons and something similar you may see in polyethylene also which burns rapidly. Let us see the burning behavior of some of the common textiles. So here is a short video clip, flammability of textiles. Let us look at the burning behavior of some textile fabrics. Why not cotton first? See what happens when the cotton fabric is burnt from the bottom. The flame spreads rapidly. And the sample burns completely. Do you see any char and some glow at the edges? Okay, let us see what happens if we ignite the fabric from the top. The rate of burning is slower than the previous case, right? But the sample does burn completely. And of course, we see the glow at the edges. It is there, is not it? The takeaway from this is in the vertical flame test, when the fabric is ignited from the bottom, the burning is very severe. Now, let us look at the wool fabric. 
when ignited from the bottom burns completely. Surprised? Wool is supposed to be more resistant to flame compared to cotton, right? Let's see what happens if we burn from the top. It extinguishes. What about cotton? It was completely burnt. So, it is true that wool is inherently more flame retardant compared to cotton. Polyester is one of the most important synthetic fibers. Let us see its burning behavior. First from the bottom. It melts and burns completely and when ignited from the top, again burns completely, not safe, right? Okay, what about the blends, say polyester cotton? When burnt, from bottom, it burns completely. It burns completely even when ignited from the top. Is any textile in common use safe from the point of view of burning? The answer is no in bold. To make these safe, we would need to impart flame retardancy. So what did you see? So most of the fibers that you saw were burning, right? So what is burning? So, burning in short is a thermo oxidative reaction. It is oxidative, that means oxygen is required. And exothermic, that actually it generates heat. So, this burning in a way is an exothermic process. For example, let us say a methane gas. What does it do? Well, you provide oxygen and of course, you have to provide some heat and then you will see it burns and also it gives heat. So, there may be that if you just have these two compounds, very rapidly they can burn, but maybe if you have some spark, then the flame will be instantaneous and after that it produces heat. And therefore, this can be considered as a fuel. And during this process of burning, obviously, the carbon and hydrogen will get converted to finally, water and carbon dioxide. So, what are textiles? Do they have carbon? That is a cellulose.
Do they have hydrogen? Yes, they have. Some of them may have oxygen. Some of them may also have nitrogen. Some of them may have sulfur. But all of them, at the end of the day, if ignited, if ignited, now the ignition conditions may be different. Some of the gases, for example, like methane, or the gas that you have in the kitchen, which is LPG or natural gas, when you switch on, the gas comes out. It doesn't burn by itself. It's dangerous, but doesn't burn by itself. So you need a spark. You show, create a spark, and suddenly there is a flame. After that, it's all heat, and that's what is fuel. So we look at some of the uh, gases which can be considered as fuel. The hydrogen catches fire rapidly and actually is dangerous. But if you look at the total amount of heat produced per kilo mole uh, is 241800. All right. We go to the next one, which is the methane we just saw before. It will give you something like 802300. That is the heat enthalpy. The propane is gives you like 2045400, larger. All right. And then acetylene is also similar, like 1256400 kilojoules per kilo mole. What do we see here? A negative sign in all of these. That means heat is being evolved, released, and so they can act as fuel. Okay. We also notice that more is the number of carbon, more is the number of hydrogen, so per mole of the compound or per kilo mole of the compound, the enthalpy is higher. Okay. That means what? If you have more carbon, more hydrogen, it is fuel, of course. When you have a polymer like polyethylene, it's got only carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. So it's a hydrocarbon. The whole of the polymer is ready to be burnt. So shall we say that higher is the molecular weight, higher is the uh, heat generated? Yes, of course. It will be per mole, if you look at it, of course it will be. But the gases obviously get ignited faster than the liquids, than the solids. But once it starts, then there is no looking back. So, people do talk about something called a fire triangle. What is a fire triangle? So, you have a fuel and you give some amount of ignition by, let us say, a Bunsen burner and you, it will start reacting and you supply oxygen and if you supply oxygen, it is available, then the exothermic process will start. So, you are doing some initiation, then the oxygen can come and then after that this flame will be there and the flame will generate heat. Some, some heat to give in the beginning, to be given in the beginning. Oxygen, if it is available, will react to go for a thermooxidative process. After that, the burning will start and heat will be released. This heat 
can go to the atmosphere. or come back to the fuel itself, let us say the fuel is textile or any other polymer for that matter. So, this becomes a continuous process, oxygen keep supplying, the heat is being fed back and so the process continues till the fuel is finished. All right. Interesting thing can happen if you cut off the oxygen supply somehow, if you somehow ensure that most of the heat goes to the atmosphere does not come back, any of these things can give a clue as to what a fire retardant may do. So, the burning is an autocatalytic process, it is a thermo oxidative, it is an exothermic process and is an autocatalytic, this burning fire triangle that you saw, autocatalytic. So, all you have to do is initiate, how do you initiate a spark? a Bunsen burner, a match stick, take it near the fuel, so it start. This initiation will start what we call as ignition. So, the polymer, the fiber, the fuel will start ignite. After it ignites, then obviously, this whole reaction flaming reaction will propagate, keep on doing this, autocatalytic because part of the heat may come back, then start burning on itself, you then do not have to initiate again. That means, once you start burning, you can remove the source of ignition, it will burn on its own. Till it is completely finished, what will be left is let us say an ash, if complete burning has taken place or has been converted to gases. Gas we said could have been, could be carbon dioxide, could be water, if there are sulphur and nitrogen also present, then obviously oxides of sulphur and nitrogen as gases also will go away. And finally, we will be left with something called an ash. So, what happens? We are just revising again. So, you supply initially some heat. So, there is you can say this is an endothermic reaction because unless you do this initiation, it may not start burning. For example, we are sitting with textiles on the, the classroom for example, as all upholstery on the uh, chairs and the table which are wood, nothing is burning, right, because they are stable. But if you initiate, then they will start a reaction. So, this will be an endothermic process and this heat for example, when it actually interacts with this is generate some type of endothermic reaction. And this endothermic reaction can generate combustible or non-combustible gases, can generate some liquidish material called tar or can produce a carbonaceous material called char. And this whole thing can be considered as pyrolysis, things are happening because you supplied the heat and this all is in some way endothermic process. The exothermic process or the combustion starts 
when there is a supply of oxygen. When oxygen is supplied, then the combustion process starts and the flame gets generated. Lot of flaming. And this exothermic process releases a lot of heat. This heat, as we said, could go to the atmosphere or can be fed back to the textile. So, the heat can come from external source or by this autocatalytic mechanism and keep burning this let us say the textile till it has finished. So, you have pyrolytic reactions, you have combustion reactions and then the cycle is complete. Is that clear? So, textiles and polymers, they are fuels. They all burn. So, this is a real problem. So, let us say we want to solve this problem. Before that, let us look at some of the definitions. like a flame resistant finish or a frame resistant textile, what it will be? A textile will be considered as a flame resistant when it extinguishes after the source of ignition has been removed. So, there is a textile. For example, this textile is not burning, but if you take a flame near this, which you saw in that video, if you take a flame near this, it starts the ignition, initiation of reactions and then it starts burning. So, you remove the source of ignition, what happens then? If it is extinguishes itself, the flame stops by itself, then it will be considered as a frame resistant or a flame retardant fabric or a textile. Is it clear? That is when you after removal of, after removal of the source of ignition the flame must extinguish by itself. So, that is the flame retardant or the another term which people use is fire resistant or fire retardant. Now, this includes two things. One is the flame other is glow. Okay. So, the fire resistant fabric should be able to stop the flame as well as stop the glow. You remember the glow that you saw in that video? Okay. After the source of ignition has been removed, this is important. So, glow would not take place on its own. The flame will also extinguish and therefore, this whole cycle of burning will be stopped. So, a fire retardant or a fire resistant fabric would extinguish the flame on and would not glow once the source of ignition is removed. So, remember we are not claiming that if you keep having a source of ignition 
take the burner and continuously keep burning and that the textile will not burn. That's not is the claim here. The claim is remove the source of ignition, it will stop burning. That's one claim. Fireproof is a textile which is really special that you actually keep on burning and still resists. For example, a glass fiber fabric, any other ceramic fabric, it will not catch flame because it does not act like a fuel. So can we do something like this? Well, that is what will, if you can, that you keep burning, it will still not burn. Those things will be fireproof. So they will be inherently different. different types of fibers having different kinds of chemistry. So, but normally we will be quite satisfied with our work if we have done fire resistant or fire retardant fabrics. Flame and glow. Flame is very rapid. You see that? You saw in the video that the moment you start igniting the flame just grows, keeps on growing up and up. Yeah, up and up means that if you burn from the bottom, the heat generated, obviously the tendency to go up, the gases which are hot have the tendency to go up. So the fuel, that the fiber, the polymer which is in the top, again gets the heat very easily. The feedback of the heat is easy. If you burn from the top, all gases and hot gases and heat is going let us say more in upward direction so the rate of burning becomes slow but as such the flame is very rapid it grows in volume envelops the whole polymer and the fiber and then the burning starts but interestingly in the case of cotton for example where you have seen the glow okay the temperature of the flame may be around 450 degrees centigrade. Obviously, it is ready to completely burn the system, burn the fiber, burn the polymer, no issues on that. The glow on the other hand is a very slow process, very slow. But if the glow continues, the polymer can completely finish because the temperature at the point of glow is actually higher than even the flaming temperature. Although flaming temperature is higher enough to burn everything. But glow, which is a very slow process, can also finish if the favorable conditions are there, enough oxygen is there, it will continue to burn and finish in a slow manner, but definitely finish. So, when we say we are going to do fire retardant, flame retardant, what are we supposed to be concerned? Ease of ignition. How easy it is to ignite? Okay. How easy? Like this textile is easy compared to, let us say, this wooden material. The gas, for example, of methane is much easy to ignite. So when somebody says, well, I want to make it difficult, so you say, well, we will do something so that it becomes difficult to ignite. Some of the pyrolytic reactions will be difficult or will be made difficult to happen. And so ease of ignition. So we make it difficult. Flame spread, how fast the flame spreads and how is it being helped? Can that be reduced? For example, if you cut the oxygen supply, the flame will not progress that fast. 
it's quite possible if the air is blowing, the wind is blowing, for example, in a forest fire, when the wind blows, a large amount of area gets burned because more oxygen is available, the flame keeps on growing everywhere. So can that be restricted? So if it is easy spreading condition, then burning will be rapid, more oxygen for that matter. That's the kind of reaction that we're talking about. Then the rate of heat release. What is burning? How much is burning per unit time? And how much heat is being released? All they are going to be important. If you can cut this down, reduce this rate, then also one may get into a favorable position. So that's the way the logic might work. Ease of extinction, that means how fast some compounds are being formed, we don't want to burn. Or you have created a condition that oxygen cannot penetrate, is not apply available around the point where the fuel actually is. You can do. One of the ways was that you, let's say people say wrap blanket for example, or you create gases, uh, let's say carbon dioxide environment all around, something like that. Smoke, we should be bothered about the smoke that is produced, carbon, carbon soot, all those things can be harmful, one should be concerned about it and one should also be concerned about toxic gases. So it's quite possible that you treat a fabric with some compound which does all those things which we just talked above but produces gases which are toxic in nature. If that happens, it's not good for us. So we should be concerned about how easy it is to ignite, what is the rate of flame spread, what is the rate of heat release, is it easy to extinguish or difficult to extinguish, how much smoke is being produced, so people may like to measure the amount of smoke, what kind of gases are being produced, are they toxic or just like that. So all that somebody will have to bother. It's not just apply a chemical and say everything is all right. So let us see in this small video clip, can we make a cotton fabric flame or let's say fire retardant? This is the short clip you may like to see. Flame retardant cotton fabrics. Let's see what happens if we have flame retardant treated cotton fabrics. Do you remember the burning behavior of untreated cotton fabrics? Ignited from the bottom. Ignited from the top. When imparted flame retardancy, it extinguishes when ignited from the top. It extinguishes even when ignited from the bottom. So yes, it is possible to impart flame and fire retardancy. Does this not give motivation to learn more about this subject? It does. Roughly, we will discuss what we call as a mechanism of flame retardancy. We just saw some factors before. And what do we do? What actually the chemicals, if at all we apply, will be doing? So there are one mechanism 
which is called a condensed phase mechanism or sometimes also referred as solid phase because most of the changes that will happen by this chemical would be in the solid phase that is the pyrolytic path of the decomposition of this polymer will be changed. So, these chemicals which will be called the fire retardants would work in the solid phase. Let us say you wanted earlier the pyrolytic product was a tarry product, was a gaseous product. So, we will say well we reduce the production of tarry products, we reduce the production of gases and so alter the path of decomposition so that they will be acting. Let us say there is a cross linking happening, the ignition time is increased because it does not burn. So, that is how the solid phase can be changed. The other is called a gas phase mechanism where sometimes also referred to as a vapor phase mechanism. So, it does not work at the solid state so much, but itself degrades and become a gas and in the flame starts acting in a vapor phase. All these flaming reactions in some sense are radical, free radical reactions that are happening around that area of the flame, very quick reactions. But these type of flame retardants which work in the gas phase by themselves will also degrade and work around in many ways. Their degradation may be an endothermic process. So, whatever heat gets generated by an exothermic flaming process is absorbed by these and they degrade or they change their phase. For example, something is burning and you throw water. So, what happens? The heat that was being produced has been used by water to become steam. So, the heat has gone out. So, that could be one mechanism. So, they also evaporate and everything else. Happens. So, they not change anything on the polymer file. They themselves have used the heat. They can degrade in a way, they can reduce the oxygen diffusion. For example, they degrade simultaneously and make an envelope around the burning area. So, oxygen cannot diffuse and so it is in the gas phase the oxygen wanted to come so that the combustion could take place and combustion does not take place. So, they have not altered anything on the polymer they themselves have degraded to create an envelope. Interesting. They can do dilution of flammable gases, a dilution of flammable gases. That means, they themselves degrade and produce gases. Let us say a compound degrades and produces a lot of ammonia, which in a way dilutes the concentration of the flammable gases which were being generated by the pyrolysis. If that happens, then the autocatalytic thing is reduced. After all, you always need certain amount of a certain critical concentration of a flammable gas before it can catch fire. If you reduce this concentration, it may not catch fire. 
all right and then the whole process the cycle stops the burning stops so it's the cycle that you're talking about you know there is a polymer it degrades forms gases the gases get oxygen thermo oxidative process flame heat is fed back and this process continues you stop anywhere at the solid phase you stay stop no gas is produced no tari liquid produced or very less produced in the gas phase they themselves degrade and do certain things like this or another way is quenching of the free radical they themselves make react with the radicals free radical that are say instead of the free radical reacting with the let's say the gaseous fuel that is coming out they are so smart small molecules go and react with the free radical themselves is not available for that other thermo oxidative process which is the flame so two basic mechanisms one is condensation phase the other is a gas phase mechanism so some of the compound that we'll study later would be acting either in the first phase or the second in some cases they may act in both phases so in this whole thing one is that that i reduce the burning i reduce the oxygen i increase the other non flammable gases and all that can happen what is important is in what period it happens the flaming is very quick you saw some of the videos right flaming is very quick so you have to do everything in very short period of span period short span of time okay so that the gases which can burn diffuse out and the oxygen by the time it comes they are already gone or the gases that the flame retardant is producing has produced quickly the dilution has taken place so there is something called a sphere of influence so the burning is taking place here and this burning so there are some gases being produced the oxygen is coming how much delay can you do in this reaction how much how fast can this diffusion take place this sphere of influence is an important thing if the diffusion takes place early then the concentration keeps on diluting as it keeps on getting out and the burning will not take place so time how quickly one acts and how quickly the diffusion takes place all of them will be important that is you should get away as early as possible from the so called fuel so this sphere of influence is an important point which you must get some other questions you may like to answer people talk about carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide ratio would you like this ratio of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide to be high or low hmm high or low similarly another thing char char we said was a carbonaceous material you know something which blackish carbonaceous material left out after the flame has been extinguished versus tar which is liquidish material what would you expect a flame retardant should do increase the char to tar ratio or decrease well obviously it's quite clear char obviously can only glow rate of burning will be very slow and so tarry material will become to catch fire it can get converted to gas easily and so you would like char to tar ratio to be high what about carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide one more carbon dioxide or more carbon monoxide 
is always a confusion. Finally, carbon will get to carbon monoxide and then to carbon dioxide. There is no doubt about that. Which will you want more? To be there as far as ratio is concerned. What do we think? Let us look at this. When you produce carbon dioxide from carbon, so much heat is generated, 110 approximately kilojoules per mole. When you convert carbon to carbon dioxide, so much heat is generated, which is almost 4 times. So, what will be your conclusion? The conclusion should be, I want to produce less heat. So, I may be interested that carbon monoxide forms and before it becomes carbon dioxide, it diffuses out from the sphere of influence. Okay? If it goes out to the sphere of influence, well, it can become carbon dioxide later, but it has got out of this zone where the fuel was there, which is a polymer or a textile and gone out. Of course, at a later stage, this can become carbon dioxide, but then the heat is somewhere else in the atmosphere. So, the autocatalytic reaction may not take place. So, what do we want? Carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide ratio to be high, char to tar ratio to be high. This is what we like. Just before we wind up, the flame retardants can be classified in many ways, but from the permanency point of view, they have been classified as temporary. Temporary is that means to washing once you give the finish, it is there, it works, you wash it off, it goes off. So, every time you want to apply, let us say, a curtain. After washing, apply the flame retardant and use the curtain. All right. Every after every wash, you apply a temporary finish. So that'll be temporary, but it'll work till the time the chemical is on the textile. Permanent, obviously, it means, but permanent is also a relative term. There's nothing like eternal, right? It's only a relative term. So, there is another class of the chemical which has been defined as semi permanent, which is very interesting. The sum of the chemicals would last up to a few washes and then the effect fades out. So, this permanent and semi permanent type of classification only means if the fabric can withstand up to 15 laundry cycles, well, it is in the range of permanent, in the category of permanent. But it is less than that, we will say, well, semi permanent. So, it was lasted to 5, to 5, 7, 8, 10 cycles, and after that, it did not. So, some permanency, but not complete. Why would this happen? We shall uh, learn about it later. Another question that you'd like to answer now. This fire retardancy, is it a surface finishing treatment or a bulk finishing treatment? A surface finish or a bulk finish? This is burning completely every part of the polymer is ready to burn. So, if you just treat a surface, it's not going to work. So, it is a bulk finish, unlike the ones which we did as a soil repellent, water repellent. There were surface finishes, you just had to change the surface. In fact, not only this, the total amount of chemical required is much higher. Let us say you might require a fluorochemical for water repellency or soil repellency, very high. Sometimes 8 to 
15 percent on the way to the fabrics may have to be added before you can say this is fire retardant. So it's not only bulk but requires more amount of chemical which must protect you, protect the building, protect the property, protect the life. That's more important. And so you may have to add more chemicals. Of course, people are looking at various types of chemicals which can be more efficient so that less amount of add-on is required to get the right property, the right flame retardancy, as per the definitions that we just talked about. So what have we learned today? Uh, we have learned that there is something called a fire triangle where pyrolysis, combustion and feedback of the heat generated to the polymer itself takes place. Definitions we try to understand, possible mechanisms and also importance of more carbon monoxide formation and importance of more char formation also we talked about. In the next class, uh, we shall talk about the chemistry of some of the fire retardants. Till then, enjoy. Thank you. See you later.